So on this question, we want to find the derivative. The derivative of y equals x cubed times the square root of 2x plus 1. But before I start taking the derivative, I want to think about which rules I should use to calculate this derivative. So I have x cubed times square root of 2x plus 1. And so because I have multiplication here, I'm going to use the product rule to calculate this derivative. The product rule has the situation where you're trying to calculate the derivative of a product, f times g. And when you calculate the derivative of a product, you do the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. So we're going to need the product rule to calculate the derivative of this product. Then I'm going to look at these individual factors. I have a factor of x cubed. And to take the derivative of x cubed is pretty simple. We'll use the power rule to do that. That's the derivative of x to a power is the power times x to 1 less than that power. And then the other factor is a bit more complicated. We have the square root of 2x plus 1. I would first probably use algebra to rewrite that factor as 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. The square root is the same thing as the 1 half power. And so on this other factor, 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power, I'm going to need to use the chain rule to calculate the derivative of that factor. So the chain rule, remember, is when we have a composition of two functions. That's one function inside of another function. So I have f with g inside. When you calculate the derivative of a composition, you're going to calculate the derivative on the outside function. That should be a prime. You calculate the derivative on the outside function, leave the inside function alone, and then chain by multiplying by the derivative of the inside. So this is the chain rule. So on this example, your outside function would be this power, and the inside function will be 2x plus 1. Because the outside function is a power, you might also be able to think of this as the general power rule, if you would rather use that instead of the chain rule. So the general power rule is when you have u to a power, you calculate the derivative, and it's the power times u to 1 minus that power times the derivative of u. So that combines both the power rule and the chain rule together. So you can use either of these rules to calculate the derivative of that individual factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and start calculating the derivative. So I'm going to use the product rule to start calculating the derivative because we have a product of the overall expression. The chain rule is only used on one of the factors. So we're going to use the product rule first. So we start by doing the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. I'm going to calculate the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor of 2x plus 1 to the 1 half times the derivative of the first factor. And I should have written here y prime to indicate we're calculating the derivative. I'm carrying down that x cubed, and then I'm going to calculate the derivative 
of 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And I'm going to use the chain rule to calculate that derivative. So I bring that power down, leave the inside alone, take 1 away from the power. And I'm going to chain by multiplying by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. Continuing on, I'm going to copy down 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. That's using the power rule. So at this point, I've calculated all of the derivatives. And this is the derivative. I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra cleanup. I have a divided by 2 and a multiply by 2 that cancels. I have two terms, this term here in the first box and this term here in the second box. They have a common factor of 2x plus 1. They also have a common factor of x. So I can factor out both of those common factors. If I factor out x, I'm going to take the lower power. The lower power is a squared. And I'll also factor out 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. That's taking the lower power of negative 1 half. If I factor that out, I'm factoring out out of x cubed, I'm factoring x squared, so I'll have 1x remaining. That's 3 minus 2 leaves me with 1. So I did this power minus this power. All of the factor of x, 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half comes out, so I only have an x left there, x to the first. And then out of the second term, the x squared comes out, leaving me with a 3. And on the 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power, I'm going to do 1 half minus negative 1 half. That's this power minus this power. So I have x squared times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Inside the parentheses, I have x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. Focusing on this part right here, 1 half minus negative 1 half is 1. x squared times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Inside the parentheses, I have x times 6x plus 3. And I got 6x plus 3 by distributing that 3 to both terms. I have x squared times 2x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. 6x plus x is 7x. And the final thing I'm going to do here is I have a negative in the exponent. So I can move that factor to the denominator and get x squared times 7x plus 3 over square root of 2x plus 1. So I've calculated the derivative to be x cubed times 7x plus 3 over square root of 2x plus 3. Sorry, 2x plus 1. On this question, we're going to find the derivative of f of x equals e to the x plus 1 over square root x. So as I'm deciding what rules to use, what shortcuts to use to calculate this derivative, I notice that I have a fraction bar and variables in both the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. So with the quotient rule, that's the derivative of a fraction and the derivative of f over g will be the bottom 
times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Then I want to look at the numerator and the denominator individually. The numerator has an e to the x in it. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The numerator also has a constant in it. The derivative of a constant is 0. And then when I look at the denominator, I have square root of x. And square root of x is the same thing as x to a power. So I'll need to use the power rule. The derivative of x to a power is the power times x to 1 less than that power. So these are the rules that I'll be using to calculate this derivative. Before I do that, I would rewrite that square root of x as x to the 1 half power. So our function is e to the x plus 1 over x to the 1 half power. When I calculate the derivative of this function, and to calculate the derivative, I'm going to start with the quotient rule. The quotient rule involves the whole function, whereas these other rules are only pieces of the function. So with the quotient rule, I'll start by doing the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. So that's using the quotient rule. And the quotient rule has me taking the derivative of these individual pieces. So I'm copying down x to the 1 half. I'm going to calculate the derivative of e to the x plus 1. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So I have e to the x. I'm copying down minus e to the x plus 1. And I need to calculate the derivative of x to the 1 half power. I'm going to use the power rule, and that will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. In the denominator, x to the 1 half power squared is x. So I've calculated the derivative at this point, and I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra cleanup. And I notice that I have a common 1 half power, x to the 1 half power, in both terms. And I also notice this fraction, which can be a little bit messy. So I'm going to put in a little magic so that it's easier to factor that out. So that fraction has a denominator of 2. So I'm going to put a fraction over here, 2 over 2, so that both terms have the same denominator, and it's easier to factor out. So I'm going to factor out the 1 half so that the fraction will go away from the numerator. And I'll also factor out x to the negative 1 half power. And I chose the lower of these two powers. So when I factor that out, let's see what's left. The 1 half is gone. So there'll still be a 2 there. And x to the 1 half power will become x to the 1 half minus negative 1 half. I took this power minus this power to get this power here. And the e to the x will also still be there. Minus e to the x plus 1 will also still be there. The 1 half power comes out, and x to the negative 1 half power comes out. So that's everything that's left in the numerator, and I still have that x in the denominator. So I have 1 half x to the negative 1 half 
inside the parentheses 2 times x to the first power 1 half minus negative 1 half will be 1 have that e to the x and I can distribute this negative to both terms the so minus e to the x minus 1 over x and I've got a fraction in the numerator as well as a negative exponent in the numerator if I move those to the denominator um, that negative will go away. So in the numerator, I have x, 2x, to e to the x minus e to the x minus 1 over 2x to the 1 half times x. And the final thing I can do here is combine these two x's. They have the same base, so we can add the exponents together. That's 2x, e to the x minus e to the x minus 1 over 2x to the 3 halves power. And of course, if you want to, you can write that 3 halves power as a radical. 2x e to the x minus e to the x minus 1 over 2 square root of x cubed. So we've calculated the derivative using the quotient rule. On this question, we want to find the second derivative of y equals x e to the x. So this, these symbols can be a little bit confusing. In the numerator, we have d squared, and this indicates taking the derivative two times. And then in the denominator, we have dx squared, and it's indicating that we're going to take the derivative with respect to x both times. So these symbols essentially mean that we're going to calculate the second derivative or y double prime for this equation, y equals x e to the x. So let's give it a try. We have y equals x e to the x. And when we're calculating this derivative, we notice that we have a product x times e to the x. So we're going to use the product rule to calculate the derivative. So um, the derivative for the product rule, f times g, is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then when we look at the individual factors, we have a factor of x. That's simple to calculate. Derivative of x is 1. And then we have the derivative of e to the x. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So these are the rules I'll calculate or I'll use to calculate the derivative. I'm going to calculate the derivative. This is the first derivative using the product rule. So I'll do x, the first factor, times the derivative of the second factor, plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor. And that's x. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of x is 1. So we have x e to the x plus e to the x. So we've now calculated the first derivative, and then we're going to calculate the second derivative. So we want to calculate the derivative of this derivative here. And we'll notice that we'll use the product rule on this term because it's a product. And on this term, we won't need the product rule. So let's calculate the second derivative. So that's first x times the derivative of the second e to the x plus the second times the derivative of the first derivative of x is 1. So that's using the product rule on the first term. Then on the second term, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So there's our second derivative. I'll just clean it up a little bit. That's x e to the x plus e to the x plus e to the x. 
those e to the x's can combine to be 2e to the x. And you could also factor out that e to the x to get x plus 2. So we have the second derivative being e to the x times x plus 2. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.